It's now my pleasure to introduce a former Blades striker, incredibly popular scorer of some crucial goals, part of the triple assault team, the promotion side, and one of only a few opposition players to receive a standing ovation at Bramall Lane. It is, as you'll know him, Steve Cabber, Cabadabadoo, Stephen, whatever you want to call him. Stephen, I'm going to call you. How are you doing? Yeah, I'm good. Thank you, mate. I'm thank you. How are you? Oh, very good. Thanks for asking. I mean, it's worth mentioning that, yes, I'm calling you Stephen, but it isn't actually your first name, is it? No, um, I've got two African names as well, which are Tijan and I think Wikipedia have, have got it wrong, have spelled it wrong because a few people actually just yesterday, someone messaged me saying, um, we're pronouncing it soft to you which it's actually Sophie you. There's a Y in there. So they've got that wrong. They've got a few other things wrong as well. I think they've docked me a couple goals, um, which it is what it is. Um, but um, yeah, that, that's fine. But yeah, they've spelt my name wrong. But I'm not really one of those overly fussy people to try and get in touch with Wikipedia or whoever it might be, the powers that be to change it. But yeah, those are my two African names that, you know, that um, I was born with. Stephen is my Christian name. Um, I was brought up in a Christian family. And my mother thought it was best that I have a Christian name as well. Let's start with you in the professional game. How did you get into professional football? I started at Tulse Hill. Um, I'm a South London boy, born and bred in Battersea. So I went to Tulse Hill um, in my early, early teenage years. Um, then I went on to Pearly Panthers. Um, I was in the school team. But I was getting a bit nervous at the time, actually, because... Everybody in the school team or at school, mates around were at pro clubs already from the ages of like six, eight, ten. And like I say, I'm in, in school now, secondary school, you know, 14, 15. Not a sniff <laughs> from any of these professional clubs. Didn't really understand how it all worked. My parents didn't want me to really play football. They were um, wanting me to focus on my education, um, which is cool uh, at the time. But of course, I wanted to play football. Um, I ended up playing for Carl Short and Athletic, and that was when I was spotted by Crystal Palace. We played them in a pre-season friendly, actually. Um, did well, relatively well, you know, and then the manager came over to me afterwards and, you know, invited me in for a trial at Crystal Palace. Um, yeah, the one thing led to another. I was there, I think, a couple months on trial, and... I didn't know how long trials were supposed to be or how long they were, you know, how I was doing. I thought I was doing okay. And, you know, even the players were like to me, like, well, you've been here a while. Haven't they offered you anything yet? I remember them saying. So then I started getting a bit nervous again, thinking, yeah, I've been here a couple of months now. Meanwhile, I should have been going to college. Um, I was enrolled in Croydon College, actually. Um, but obviously, I was going them to Crystal Palace uh, instead. Um, so leaving the house in the morning, my mum thinking I'm going to college. And I was actually going to the Crystal Palace training ground in Mitchum it was at the time. Um, so luckily enough, um, I did well. And yeah, they offered me a contract um, at YTS at the time. I think it was an 18-month contract. Um, and then, yeah, term pro, made my debut at 18. And yeah, the rest is history, I guess. Yeah, it was actually it when you were with Crystal Palace, but on loan at Grimsby that Sheffield United fans first saw Cabba. Tell me about that performance for Grimsby Town against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane, which led to something I have never seen since, a standing ovation for an opposition player. Yeah, I think it was a Tuesday night and we came to Sheffield, played at Bramall Lane. Um, and yeah, it, did, it was just one of them games. I think they were a decent footballing team at the time. You know, people like Jags, Monty, Tongi, um, Carlos Saba, the big chief. Uh, so yeah, it was just it was just one of them games, you know. I think I'm sure it was an, an evening game, Tuesday yeah, night, and it just yeah, as a, as a player I was, and you know, type of player I was, worked hard, grafted. I don't think I don't think I scored. I, I, I no, think we, we lost two one. I think um, I might have been involved in the goal, or we lost. I, I can't remember the scoreline, but I just remember playing pretty well, mm -hmm. and I maybe just ran my socks into the ground, as they say, and then I remember. And being substituted not too long before the final whistle. Um, and yeah, got a standing ovation. And didn't think anything of it at the time, to be honest with you. Just thought, 
you know, it's thinking about the result actually and just thinking mm. how natural I was actually, you know, and I just thought, okay, it is it is what it is. I'm amazed you say that. Like didn't it didn't it mean a lot to you? You must have known growing up watching football, that's pretty rare. Um You know what I was I was one of them players that didn't really hear the crowd when I was playing, even though I was getting substituted and walking off. Um I, I just I just remember it being loud. Just remember yeah. just loads of noise. And I thought, well, I've got some decent fans here. Obviously, I'd heard of Sheffield United before, you know, um, being in the Premier League when it first started. Brian yep. Dean, who I'm still in touch with. Um, Legends. You know, De- Dean Saunders. Uh, yeah, so I, I remember the team and everything. And I, I know the history, obviously, a lot more now as well. Obviously, been there for f- five years. But no, I just remember just, you know, just thinking, you know, it's Tuesday night game, you know, it was, yeah, it was good crowd, lively, it was loud. I just remember being loud and I thought, I thought we put a decent shift in. Like I said, I can't remember the score, but I just remember, you know, me putting in a good shift and the boys putting in a good shift. Um, and yeah, and I, I just, I, I actually can't remember too much about it, if I'm honest. What are you like for remembering games? Yeah, test me. Go on. I'm gonna I'm gonna put you on the spot a little bit later. What I am gonna say is one of the things I was gonna ask was, did that standing ovation have any impact when it came to you making your decision? But I'm taking it from that answer, no. And then it was what two hundred and fifty thousand pounds. Obviously, Neil Warnock was sufficiently impressed, and then you joined from Crystal Palace. So talk to me about that move. Yeah, I mean, I think I started to score a few goals for Grimsby because I didn't score against Sheffield United, but um, I mean. I was, at, I was training and then the boys kept saying to me, oh, I heard you go and I heard you leaving. And I was like, this was news to me because I, you know, again, didn't really read the press or anything like that. I was just getting on with training and playing. And the boys were just coming out of all different types of clubs and everything. And, you know, it's a small world. People hear things, you know, whether it's social media. I mean, it wasn't that big at the time, I don't think, as it is today, but through their agents and just you just hear things, don't you? But I hadn't heard anything. My agent hadn't called me and told me this club was interested. I just thought, oh, I'm playing well. I'm doing quite well. I actually thought Crystal Palace were going to call me back. That's what I was thinking. And I was probably I was probably hoping that to a degree, not that I wasn't enjoying myself at uh, Grimsby. I was, but I just thought, well, I'm, I'm showing that I can play at this level and I'm doing quite well. Um, maybe they'll, they'll call me back. So when I did get the call to come back, I was like, okay, they're calling me back. But it was obviously to, they had accepted a bid from Sheffield United. And I did hear there was a few other teams in, involved, but or interested, should I say. But may, maybe it did subconsciously, maybe the standing ovation and people, you know, the, the calibre of the club, that's what swayed it. I'm not sure. Or maybe it might have just been <laughs> Crystal Palace are the only... Um, club that they uh, accepted the offer from Sheffield United. So I am going to test you. Bradford City nil, Sheffield United 5. Yeah, that was my first game. Absolutely. We're going back to your debut. The winter yeah. of that uh, 2002, it would been the 23rd of November 2002. You and Dean Windass had an absolute field day. What do you recall yeah. from that away day? I, yeah, I do remember that game. Um, I remember my first game wasn't supposed to be that game. It was another game. Um, but I think it got called off, whether it was a waterlogged pitch, like you say, it was the winter. And I think it was yeah. a home game, actually, but it got called off. So I t- so it maybe gave me a bit more time to train with the lads. Um, maybe an extra week training to, you know, settle in or whatever. And yeah, I, I remember them signing Dean Windus at the time. Um, another character. We had a lot of characters, you know, you know young guys you know, older pros, but everyone got on. And the, yeah, it was a great dressing room, by the way. Great dressing room. I think that's why we've done so well. Obviously, we had good players as well. Um, but yeah, I remember it being 5 nil. I can't remember if I scored first or Dino scored first. I can't remember. Um, but I just remember um, us doing really well. And I was thinking, geez, if it's going to be like this every week, this is, <laughs> this is decent, 5 nil. And then later on, actually, a funny story, I'm, I'm still in touch with a lot of the boys and, um, Paul Pesky Salido, I talk to quite a bit now and then actually um, when we do catch up. Um, he said, I think they played maybe Gillingham or someone like that the week before I got um, signed or or he had, he had been playing a couple of weeks before I had signed or whatever, or maybe the game before I signed. And I think he scored or did really well. And he said that at the time, Neil Warnock said to him, right, that's it. You're in the team now. You've got the shirt. And then he signed me and then he, <laughs> and then I came in and played. So... 
Yeah, that's that classic a... Neil though, wasn't he? Loved a striker. Oh, um, I, I remember some games we had like five strikers on the bench. Mm. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah, especially in the days when we only had three subs. So here's, <laughs> <laughs> here's the test. Yeah. And it's a really mean one. And I'm sorry in advance. Give me the Sheffield United 11 from your debut. Oh my God. Wow. I will help you with All right. anyone Involved you want. got to be Paddy. Of course. Was Rob Oliphorn still there? Uh, my lookalike, uh, he was, but he wasn't. He did play Coslook, Cos- Rob Coslook? Because he was on the bench. Oh, God, right back. Who would have played? Jags would have played, obviously. Yeah, Jags played um, right back. Okay, Jags. Murph, did Murph, Big Murph play? Yeah, Sean Murphy. Pagey? Absolutely. Left back was on loan. I want to say John Harley. You're right. Yeah, me and John Harley, and still, yeah, we're still in touch. Good. Um, John Hart, midfield, Michael Tong. Yep. Uh, Stuart McCall. Yep. Mon- Monty? Do you know what? Monty wasn't even on the bench. He had to go next to, oh, Lord. Uh, um, that was a clue, by the way. Uh, no, I got... Yes, I, <laughs> you I don't know, listen I, to the fans singing. All right, I got that. <laughs> Brownie. Yeah, that's it. Uh, you need your te- right winger. Text me yesterday, actually, Brownie. I'll really? Probably, yeah, I think he did the marathon. Yeah, he did. Um, uh... Right winger. Didn't didn't say no on this kind of weather. Oh, love? Yes. I was going to say to a pair of gloves, but that's it. Nuddy. And then yeah, you, already, you already know the two strikers because it was you and Yeah, Dino. me and Dino. Me, I did, all, I did not bad there. You did really well, absolutely brilliantly. If you're interested, you had Chief on the bench, uh, Sabs. Sabs. Uh No, it was actually a man who I don't think too many Blades will remember, uh, Jean-Philippe Javare. Yeah. yeah, he's a nice guy. Very yeah. nice. Technically very good. Nice yeah. guy. Yeah, and, and, nice guy. And Cozzy. And you're absolutely right. There were five subs, of course. Uh, then yeah. I was only joking. But tell me about that. When we think of Sheffield United, your personal Blades highlight from your whole time. There are so many memories. Yeah, Leeds was a, yeah, it was a great day. Um, yeah, scoring against a Premier League team. I think it may, might have been an England keeper at the time, Robbo. Mm-hmm. Robinson might have been at the time. Um, yeah, it was a decent strike. Uh, the playoff against Nottingham Forest, that was quite mm. good. Um, considering we were... Were we down? Yeah. Were we, we down just, from the first so, leg? So we drew the, drew the first one, one all. One all, and then but it was we were down like two nil or yeah, one yeah. nil on the first leg, in the second leg, in yeah. the home leg. That's right. And I remember being—I um, didn't start that. No, no, I didn't start. I was on the bench. I came on for the first leg as well, and uh, Michael Dawson got sent off for a horrendous tackle on me. Still a red today. Two reds actually. <laughs> and I remember their manager, Paul Hart. Oh, um, I think if he sees me now, I think he still despises me. I'm like. No idea. Like, what, what did you want me to do? He absolutely poleaxed me in the middle of the park. It's a red. Anyway, he was going crazy. Crazy he was. So actually, when I came on, and I remember coming on, and I'm standing on the sideline, and I can hear him in the background saying things like, can't, don't can't remember what he was saying. But actually, when I scored, that was why I ran over towards the bench, and I was blowing kisses towards him. That was towards him. Right. Um, at the time, so that was that was that was the reason behind um, those kisses. But um, yeah, that was an unbelievable night, though, because I think we were down and out. Um, I think we might be one or two nil down that day. I think David Johnson scored, and maybe Andy Reid scored for yeah, them. Two nil down, yeah. Yeah, and then yeah, I think I came on maybe half time, maybe, or I came on quite I think for, early uh, for Windows, Was it? Uh, pos- yes, because me and Saab's played up front. So I remember yeah. Saab's got the flick on um, from Paddy's long kick, and then. Yeah, I scored. Yeah, we had a great night out after that. I bet. Um, yeah, yeah. I just think because it was a nighttime game, something about nighttime games. That game was was special. Obviously, we were down as well. Yeah, just unfortunately, was... we couldn't um, finish off the job um, in the final. That was devastating because I think we played Wolves maybe just before the end of the season as well. Actually, I think it might have been a draw or we beat them. I'm not sure at Bramwell Lane. Mm. I can't remember that we definitely, season. we definitely beat them at Molyneux yes. that season. 
three. I remember scoring at Molyneux actually for Grimsby, not right. not for Sheffield. Um, but yeah, we, we were really confident. I I, I thought of oh, yeah. I think we, we all, finished we all did. third that year, maybe third, yeah, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. finished sixth, maybe I'm not sure. Or maybe I remember fifth, where they finished. finished. Yeah, but I was we was confident, but maybe I don't know. Maybe it was just the day it wasn't it wasn't our time. They had a lot of experience. I remember they had like Mark Kennedy, maybe Paul Lintz, Alex Ray. Um, I'm not sure if Dennis Irwin played at the time, but he played for them that season. Mm-hmm. I remember him playing for them that, that season. Great fullback. Yeah, exactly. Um, maybe Nathan Blake might have played even up top for them. But they had a good, strong team. But we obviously, we had a great team as well. So it was just not meant to be. And then I think we had a penalty and Brownie missed it, I think. Yep. Um, you got so, a good memory for all this stuff, considering how long ago it was. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's 20 years ago. Yeah, these things stick in your mind. I think, and I thought when we got the penalty, and I thought if this goes in, I mean, we will come back kings. I think I mean, we scored a lot of goals that season. You know, we spread it around the team quite a bit. I think Tongi got a good, good handful of goals. I would score. Brownie obviously scored twenty plus goals that year. You had Saabs, Pesh that could score. Jags would pop up with goals. So we had goals all through the team. But yeah, it was just just wasn't our day. Obviously, uh, I just remember it being. It was at the Millennium Stadium. Stadium. It was roasting. Oh my, it was roasting. And we had these shoes, right? And I think it was Saabs that got the suits or the shoes. But I just remember everybody complaining about the shoes, how tight they were. And I just remember after the game, I couldn't put those shoes back on. It was, my feet had swollen up maybe because of the heat and everything. And I just remember us being in our hotel and just thought, I am not wearing those shoes. They were a nightmare to get on or off. But um, yeah, that was a great season. But yeah, probably yeah. Yeah, the Leeds, Leeds or the Forest game. Yeah, yeah, on on a, on a par really. So, what about your favourite goal that you actually scored for United? Because we've talked about games. There is there one goal you've scored a lot of different goals as well for them. One of my cleanest strikes, I thought, was against Ips. I think it was Ipswich. I think we beat them two 0 at the lane, and I was like at the corner of the box. It was a, it was a real acute angle actually. So. It was just like, and I just hit it. You know, when you just hit it and you just know it's an arrow and it just went in like, a little bit of fade on it as well. And it just stayed low like a grass car. And I just remember that just, just going in. I, I did like that goal. Um, there were two goals I scored. I, I don't know. I think it was against Crew when I'd been injured for that long period of time. I think maybe almost two years where I had the patella tendonitis in my knee. Then I came back, ruptured my Achilles the first game, came back from that, um, snapped my leg in the second game. That was against Wigan. I did my um, Achilles against Sheffield Wednesday in a reserve game. That was my first game back. Ruptured my Achilles and came back from that. Broke my leg against Wigan. And I think my comeback game, or my few of my comeback games, two or three into it, I think we played, like, I think we played crew at home. Someone at home. And I remember Andy Gray being there. I think Andy Gray scored two. We won like 4-0, maybe. I remember scoring two that game. And I just thought... It was it was great because I'd been out for so long, so you know I could still get back to a level. I could still score goals, but yeah, I was uh, I was unfortunately plagued with a lot of injuries. You were. What was that? Was that something that just happened in your professional career, or were you someone who was injured when you were youngster as well? You know what? You know, I I sat there a few times, started to think back, and just used to think, you know what? I always, I always had an injury, always, and but they were always major injuries as well. There was yeah, always yeah. something wrong with my body, and I think like aesthetically, like to look at people, if they like even now, people say, "Oh, you look fit and healthy and everything." But honestly, maybe I just my body just weren't built for it. Honestly, I don't know. I just I maybe just couldn't handle the rigors of of playing football. I don't know, but that's what, I'm very grateful for for playing football and you know getting into the game so late as well. So that's what I'm grateful for. Obviously, still involved um, to till this day but I was yeah I was injured a lot I I was always I can't remember even like the grueling pre-seasons right where I just thought I could get through a whole pre-season and and be fine I just I don't I I did loads of pre-seasons but I just think I've always been injured somewhere along the line and just think it was it's just so frustrating and just couldn't put put my finger on why or you know i I thought I lived quite a you know a healthy life, but again, maybe my body was just just not not fit for the rigors of uh, playing um, professional football. Maybe that was going so. for us, all of us, because I, I mean, I remember you coming back. I think it was uh, probably not a night game, but I feel like it was dark, and you sort of right in front of where I was sat, sort of limping off after was you. That against Wigan. 
Yeah, after you'd come back, and, and of course we now know how serious that was. And every yeah. time, it felt like after you got that first injury with United, you were uphill, an uphill battle to get yeah, back to was. regular. We wanted to see you play forty six games. Oh, from the start. so did just I. Honestly, didn't happen. No, I just didn't. I just I, like again, just and then after the big injuries, then I started getting the muscle injuries. So it was like maybe I was like overcompensating somewhere, and it was like. And even when I'm talking about it now, I'm I'm not one for excuses at all, you know. But I, I feel for these guys that do get injured, whether it's you know, um, whether it's just a muscle injury or you know, if it's a contact injury, because you know you need to be fit and healthy to play this game because the sport is getting quicker and faster, as we know, and how hard it is, and you know the boots are lighter, the balls are quick, move more. And everybody's fit and healthy, you know. It's, it's I thought it's like athletics with foot, with a ball now, you know. Every everyone that plays is, you know, especially at that, that top level. If you want to get to that top level, which of course, um, well, m- majority of people, you, I would have thought that played the game want to get to that top level, and that was the level, obviously, the level I was trying to aspire to, um, and just could never, even when I did get there, didn't didn't have a great time there, didn't play that as many games I would have liked, um, was never fully fit. Or just, yeah, just didn't materialise for me. So it's not a regret because you can't regret something like that. You know, I played the game. I love the game still, you know. So it's that one just being involved and, in, you know, how many people can say they've they've had a football career and been a professional. Um, professional anything is hard, isn't it? Especially when you have to rely on your body as well. Yeah. You know, because again, sometimes when your body breaks your down, <laughs> when, when your body breaks down, there's not much you can do about it. You know, you can do... Whether it's all the gym in the world, we see all the doctors, you know, the dietitians, you know, any anybody holistic, you can pray. But if it's just not meant to be, what what can you do? So you know, it, it is tough. It is tough on people. So when I see people saying, you know, oh, he's injury prone, or why is he always injured, or you just think, no one wants to be injured. It's like being ill. No one wants to be ill, do they? <laughs> No. That's what they say. Health is your wealth, right? No one wants to be ill. I mean, it's probably the worst feeling, isn't it? You know, you can't look after yourself. You can't be yourself. You know, so. But yeah, I'm I'm just grateful. Yeah, I know I've been going on a bit now about that, but yeah, just grateful to have played and of the level I played at as well. Unfortunately, not as many games I would have liked or as many goals, but yeah, just grateful to have played and met some great people and, like I say, still involved in the game. You know, happy to do things like this, you know, and give people insight and, you know, great to see the Blades are still doing well. You did get to the top of the club game. And I think it's one amazing thing that so many will be watching this that never achieved that. Yes, you didn't play as many as you you wanted to, but you got there. Once you're there, you want to stay there. And I think, don't get me wrong, it's very hard to get there, whether you're being bought by, you know, by someone at the summit or, you know, you go up with a team, you know, getting promoted, which was a great year as well. Yeah. I actually predicted it that year. Actually, we was in we was in China. I, I'm sure it was in China, Singapore maybe. Um, because of yeah, China, we were, yeah. We were didn't, you, didn't you go on the Great Wall of China? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Great Wall of China. That's always a clue for me where I am. You know? <laughs> at the time, at the time, honestly, I mean, I just we just well, I say we. I'm going to speak for myself. Didn't appreciate that, you know. You, you know, we walked, or I've walked the Great Wall of China. You know, you've been in China. That was a great experience as well. Was it actually? I'll be honest, because we've spoken to other players, and they didn't say it was a great experience, but it bonded you as a group because you actually had a bad experience together. Oh, listen, it weren't. Listen, I think maybe they must be talking about the the whole food and the humidity, yeah. maybe, yeah, and exactly. just the traveling, um, which wasn't great. I think. I think it was Andy Gray or something. He couldn't sleep. He had insomnia and he, and he came back, I believe. I think it was him. I don't want to throw anyone under the bus, but I think might it be. might have been him. But I just remember, I don't know why, but that season, and it was pre-season, so we hadn't started them the season yet. I just said, oh, we've got a great bunch of lads here. Um, I think we'll get promoted this year. Honestly, I don't know if anyone will remember it, but I definitely do. No reason to, to lie. Um, but I just thought, just, just felt something. We'd get promoted this year, and with a good bunch of lads, you know, the camaraderie was there. And I just, I don't know. The season hadn't even started yet, so I didn't know. You, you know, the championship. We just never know, do you? Neil Warnock would never play me and Danny Webber together because he said we were yeah. too similar. But you, um, you were pals, weren't you? You and Webb. Oh, we're best. Yeah, we're best. Yeah, best mates. We're still, we're still mates now for sure. Um, 
going to his wedding um, in oh, the summer. Brilliant. So were you like uh, saying in the dressing room, look, if we get picked together, this is going to be like York and Cole if we get a chance. Honestly, in training, we were we were on fire. People just did not want to train against us. We were, and people always, not always, but people say, oh, do you, how come you two get on so well? You know, it's like, because like, you never played together in the sense of receiver one or the other. And I was like, well, my my feeling and thoughts were behind that. Well, I'm not picking the team. Webbs ain't picking the team. The manager's picking the team. If we've got grief with anyone. It's going to be with the manager, but it is what it is. You know, we're quite similar. We like the same things. We've got very similar taste in a lot of things. Uh, similar player in some aspects. Um, but no, he's a good lad. But like I say, we had we had a good, good spirit. Good, and I think you know that's the core. That's where it's got to start um, for me. You got that good dressing room. It it. it takes you a long way you know and you know it's a long season you know you've got some dark yeah. days cold days cold journeys you know injuries things don't go well you know there's so many variables in a, in a 10 month season but you got you got to stick together and i think that will stand you in good stead but we got on as as every the whole squad did i can't remember you know there being any animosity in the squad or people not getting and of course people wanted to play of course they did but they knew, you know, if someone was playing in their position, they were doing well. There was a reason that maybe they were playing and you, you weren't. So, yeah, yeah we, got on, we got on fine. Yeah. I love hearing that. You you must have been even more convinced of your prediction after that first game at home against... Leicester. Yeah, I mean, absolutely smash them, wasn't it? 4-1? Yeah, Leicester it was. Um, I remember the first couple games of that season. I remember, I think our last game in pre-season, we played like someone like a Sunderland or someone like that in pre-season. And then, yeah, we played Leicester... Um, I I didn't start. I came on. Um, oh, Paul Eiffel was there. I remember Paul Eiffel being there. Um, I came. Scored a penalty. I scored a penalty that game. I think I might. Have, I'm not sure if I came on for Webs. It was normally that, but um, or if he didn't start or not. But I came on, scored. Um, I think we might have had QPR next away. I, I think, think we had Burnley away because I remember driving from. Oh, Scotland, okay. Finally. And then it was QPR. Oh, okay. Which that you was, did yeah, score maybe. in. I scored against QPR. I can't. Yeah. Rem- I can't remember the Burnley game actually. We won two. Was that a night game? Yeah, it was a night game. Yeah. I remember it now. Did we have Akin Bailly that time as well? Or was I he think there he'd yet? signed there. Yeah, I mean, I think Ships scored in that one. Um, okay. But we had to wait a little while, I think, till uh, Adi Akin Bailly was with us, and certainly he could smash one in against the Pigs. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I remember we had Bruce Dyer that year. Oh, we had a lot of players. I think that was the same year. <laughs> a lot yeah, of strikers. Had, yeah, yeah, ships, yeah. But yeah, I remember scoring against QPR. Um, I think we beat them 2-1 maybe, I'm not sure. But yeah, no, we did. We had a great squad. We had a great squad. Um, great experience at that time as well. Um, the younger players, obviously, that when I'd been there maybe two or three years before, had obviously grown because they're playing so many games as well. So the experience was there, even though they were still young. I mean, I, I was probably still... Um, relatively young as well, 23, 24 maybe at the time. Um, so, yeah, the experience was there. The top Tom with people like Ships and Akinbai, Bruce Dyer, people like that. I'm not sure who was at the back for us then. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, yeah, okay. Chris Morgan was there. I can't remember who else was at the back though. Well, no. we still had Jags, of course. We had Unsworth uh, Jags, as well. Yeah, oh, Unzi. Yeah, no, yeah, that, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so again, we well, had Craig, Craig Short as well, didn't we? Shorty Lee come in, big Shorty come in. Yeah, yeah. We had a great blend. Yeah, so that's what I mean. We just had characters and everyone was a character. I think you needed to be a character to be in that dressing room. You know, you just need... Not as not that if you didn't have a, a good personality or a, a character, um, you wouldn't have been welcome. But I just think... It just brought it out of everybody. If you even if you didn't have a character, there was so much laughter and joy. And of course, when you're winning, you know, yeah, and you were winning, nothing, nothing beats that. Then, do you? you know, so it, the place is buzzing. Everybody's happy because you're winning anyway. You know, so but yeah, it was a good group, good core. We had a good core of of uh, let's say youngish players, and obviously the older ones as well were were good. You know, we we kept them young, let's say, and we just. Yeah bonded and we we use all the experience and our experience from playing the games as well. The only time Neil kind of relented was Sheffield Wednesday at home, but even then he wouldn't let you play up front with just Danny. I think Neil Shipley started as well and you had mm. like a three-pronged attack, which didn't, yeah. it didn't work. And I yeah. 
would have loved to just see you and Danny. Yeah, honestly. Two up top. I think he just had it in his head or his mind that we couldn't play together. For, I think, the, I just think the reason was because he want, he liked a big man. He liked yeah, he a liked big a big man. man, little man partnership. Yeah, he liked that combo. Chief and, and Pesh, he played oh, quite yeah. happily. Exactly, Sabs and Pesh or mm. whatever. But even saying that, when me and Dino played, even on my debut, Dino's probably, I don't know, I, I think he's, I don't think he's, He's, we're different players, of course. Yeah, but he's big in the his sort of strength. Yeah, yeah, and that, yeah. He's probably um, that is more of his game, back to goal and holding yeah, it hold, up. Hold and, up, absolutely. Yeah, right off to you. Yeah, You've got the pace. yeah, that is that, that, that's that is. But true. I don't necessarily agree with Neil's fair. I mean, I'm not saying old school thinking because I actually think Neil was was brilliant with the mind games, the way he spoke to players. He's a motivational manager. He's a he motivator. Got, oh, got that one of the best ahead of his them. time with all of that. Yeah, I just yeah one think of the best fans. Players. We just wanted to see you and Danny Weber regularly starting up front together. Oh, that would have been electric, honestly. It smelled like goals. We just got on so well, you know. We we just put in a shift as we do. It would, it, it, it definitely would have worked. It would have been exciting for sure. It would have been exciting. That's exactly the term, isn't it? It would have been exciting. Oh, it would have been because we was like that in training, just like it was. It was just like we didn't even have to say anything to each other. I'm, I'm sure. I'm not saying we were York and Cole by any stretch of imagination. <laughs> well, I'm just saying like we were just on the same wavelength, on on the same football wavelength, off and on the pitch. So yeah, it would have worked. It would it would have worked. And we the thing is, because we, we got on so well, we would have wanted it to work. And yeah. even all the lads in that playing with us, they just yeah they they were buzzing. They were they hated playing against us in training. I just think when you've got a good rapport off the field, utilize that. But anyway. We're, we're rewriting history and it doesn't matter no matter how much we talk about it you're not going to play up front no, with Danny Weber regularly no. now uh, but I want to talk about Arsenal away in the Premier League Neil Warnock he brought you on late I seem to recall but I remember at the time I was at that game I know we got hammered but I said to everyone around me he's, isn't that nice because I thought your team your boyhood team was Arsenal so I got a feeling like Neil was doing that to give you a chance to play against your boyhood side, which was which was nice because you hadn't yeah. been involved certainly as much as you should have been in that season. Yeah, no, for sure. And also, um, I think we got beat three 0 I think that was the it season. Is. Was that two thousand and six season? Is that the season yeah. that Emirates opened? So I think that so, was their third game, their third league game at the Emirates because it was quite early in the season. I remember it being like a nice hot day, and actually, I did come on, um, and actually, I nearly scored. Um, I remember. I think, I think it was Rob Kozlak who put in the cross and I had a dive and he had a back stick. Um, in that and... awful black and white kit. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It was, yeah, it was, it, well, I think maybe Neil Warnock was maybe thinking of Notts County at the time, maybe. <laughs> One <laughs> of his favourite teams. Yeah, exactly. But I just remember thinking, oh, Layman, why have you, it was Layman in goal, I'm sure. I'm like, why have you just saved that? You're up 3 0. It could be like five minutes to go or whatever. Just let that in, mate. Why has he? Why has he saved it? That's all I kept thinking. I was thinking, oh god. But anyway, yeah, it was great to touch the pitch. Um, obviously, great to play against them, um, play against those top players. And of course, you just wanted to do that every week. But yeah, we were yeah definitely um, outplayed, outclassed that day. But it was yeah, it was nice to get on the pitch. A lot of my family and friends came to the game as well. Probably their first time at the Emirates as well. So yeah, it was a it was a good day for that reason. I seem to remember Mikel Lidgetwood having a shot from. Well, about 30 yards, I thought this is going in all the way. I can't even remember if it did go in, was disallowed, or it just looked like it went in. Cause yeah, he, he had a strike in him. He did, yeah, he's he a good lad. I, I actually, he's at um, Reading, um, doing a bit of coaching. I'm not sure uh, to what capacity or what age group or whatever. Or he might be doing the loans, actually. He might have moved on to the loans group. Uh, loan manager. Yeah, possibly. But um, yeah, good lad. Uh, known him years. Um, yeah, like I say, majority of the people that came into the club were, were good people in well, I've got another game for you. I'm just going to say some players' names. I just want you to tell me, just quick off the top of your head, what you think of when you hear these names. Yep. Heyo Hai Dong. Hai Dong, Hai Dong. Was he a, the Chinese player that we had? Yeah, so Paul Eiffel said he was the Chinese David Beckham, but when they saw him play, he was more like the Chinese Dave from Peckham. <laughs> <laughs> he was a legend when we went to China. Oh, he my legend, God, it was a joke. Honestly, yeah, Hai Dong, Wow. I don't. You've not thought about him for some time, right? Not since he left the club. <laughs> <laughs> not going to lie. 
<laughs> yeah, well, uh, yeah, that was random. That was random. <laughs> yeah, he was. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe they sent his, his twin brother or someone. I'm not sure. <laughs> I just remember him like just thinking, "How old is this guy? He's really old." <laughs> well, was he what? ever any any cop in training? Oh no. Nah, okay, nah. I don't want to put you in a bad position. No, I'll tell no, you no, one, I remember. an I remember. interesting one. And Saab has told us this: Lawrence Ten Heuvel in training was lethal. Honestly, what technique he had. Great player. Good lad as well. He was a good lad. Good lad. Yeah, just maybe just, I don't know, just maybe because when I was there, he didn't play much at all. No, no. Here's another one that didn't play much, but went on to have a really good career. And I'm going to ask you if you knew when seeing him in training, if you knew he was going to go all the way at the top and stay there, Simon Francis. Yep. You called it. We played them, obviously, my, on my debut, on my debut. And I thought, you know, this guy's a good size, isn't he? Good unit. And he played centre-back that day. I'm sure he played centre-back that day. So I'll never let him forget that. Ruined him, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but Neil Warnock but, didn't, didn't fancy him, did he? Yes, I don't know. Yeah, but obviously he bought him in, at the time. He bought him, but then what? I remember him away at Stoke playing him on the right wing. Because you know what? He... <laughs> For the size of him, oh, he technically unbelievable, unbelievable on the ball. Um, great power. I remember him just having great power. I wouldn't say he was rapid, but he was quick. He was quick. He was solid. What a player he was. And I always used to think when he, because when he we signed him, obviously I got on really well with him. Obviously, uh, another young lad, um, a few years younger than me, I think he is. But I just, we bonded again through on and off the pitch, music or whatever. And um, I think he was a Nottingham boy. Um, but yeah, still talk to him now, actually. He's um, doing well. He's at Bournemouth now. Um, I think he's assistant technical director. Um, good lad. Great lad, actually. Uh, always knew he was, he, I think he was easily influenced at the time because he was maybe a bit young. So maybe he was a bit young and a bit young acting, easily influenced. Um, thought it was a bit of a laugh or a joke. Maybe obviously he didn't play as much at the time. But yeah, technically he had everything. Everything. I'm glad I asked He had everything. Him. Yeah, and he just yeah. maybe like a fine wine just got better and better as he got older. It's a great way know? of putting it. Absolutely. Yeah, he, yeah, very, yeah, I called that very good player. Because obviously you play with these people in training. Yeah, you so you know. Can, you see it. And yeah, yeah, he was a top, top player. Obviously, and obviously... His career preceded him and, and showed that. So, yeah, yeah, good that, lad, that's great an interesting, lad. That's an interesting one, isn't it? Because like, you, you'd normally think if you're good enough, you will make it regardless. But it's probably yeah. not always like that. You no, there's too many. Because I think good players many, that didn't quite get there. Where there's too many gone. variables in life, you know. It's, you know, and you're not just talking about football, just in life, you know. Yeah. There's, there's so many that, we, you know, we, we don't even know about um, when we're talking about um, people's lives. So... Yeah, it's, it's it's difficult, and you got to think this inundated with player. Just uh, I know you can have t- only twenty five men in the squad. You know when you're talking about um, these teams these days, but it's just oversubscribed, don't they? Sometimes as well, there's a lot of players you know coming through the academies, and obviously players that you can buy from abroad. So yes, yeah, world yeah, worldwide lovely game, isn't it? Absolutely. So did you want to leave when you went to Watford? No, no, no. I didn't want to leave. But at the same time, I wanted to play. But again, that was actually when... That was probably the the worst move of my career, you know, and that just went... I just just sank like a ship. When was I left. Eddie, Eddie Boothroyd, was it? Oh, my Lord. Less, yeah. The less we what was he like? Him, the better. Oh, my God. No, unbelievable. Not your favourite manager, it's better to oh. say. By a long, by a long, long way, you know, you just want honesty and, you know, you want that transparency and, you know, you just want people to tell you how it, as it is. Um, but yeah, just, let's just say we just, it just didn't, didn't work and just didn't, we just didn't get on from the get go. Um, and sometimes that happens, you know, it does. And, yeah. yeah, that's that, that, that was that. And yeah, um, after that, it just went kind of downhill my career really. Um, and then I actually wasn't injured that much actually. But then again, I wasn't playing that much, so maybe <laughs> that's why I wasn't injured that much. Who, who was your favourite manager then? Put a positive spin on managerial chat. Um, I did like Steve Koppel. I mean, he gave me my debut. Um, good lad. 
lad. Like he's my angel. <laughs> great guy, great guy, good coach. But he just tell you as it is. Just tell you he would just tell you as it is. You know, um, uh, Neil. I didn't mind. I didn't mind Neil Warner because at least you knew where you stood with him. But at times you thought, well, you're telling me something that I just want to hear. You you think I want to hear? I can see through it. I'm not a young kid no more. So probably, um, yeah, probably Steve Koppel. Yeah, good guy. Good guy. Yeah. And you said uh, you're still in football, so I know what you're doing. But tell people who aren't familiar, what are you up to these days? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a football agent. I'm, I work for Base as a football agency. Um, are also owned by CAA. So it's like CAA are this massive conglomerate. Um, company from the states they are massive huge entertainment they got a lot of actors um they do sports as well um and we are just their football football branch let's say well i can't thank you enough for giving up this time stephen cover it's been an absolute pleasure thank you for the memories i mean it you for a lot of us watching this a hugely Im- impactful player for sheffield tonight yeah. in, in a really great time so thank you all right cheers take care